What a comeback. I thought we just we, we didn't have it in us, but we, hey, we pulled through. That's all that matters. An NFC Championship game for the history books. She battled cancer this year, so we weren't sure if she was going to make it. I'm glad I'm alive for it. An epic collapse fuels the 49ers' confetti. It was like noisy and all that stuff. We were just having fun and excited. San Francisco tops Detroit with the new catch to be etched in 49ers lore, helping send them to Super Bowl 58. You ready to go to Vegas? I'm ready to go to Vegas. We can go, we can go right now. Looking for that revenge against Kansas City. As now once again they duel with Patrick Mahomes, the Kansas City Chiefs, and that other global superstar. Super. <laughs> 49ers fans high-fiving and kissing in the fourth quarter of Sunday's NFC Championship game at Levi's Stadium. A comeback victory for the Niners. Still had faith, not necessarily sure it was going to happen, but faith always, man. And while some of these faithful might have started questioning things after the first half. I was ready to leave. I was starting to lose a little bit of, you know, my, my swag. The fans did not leave. I was starting to get nervous, but he kept me in it. He was like, Dad, just hold on, keep the faith, we're going to come back. We've been going to the games for 52 years, so we just stay no matter what. <laughs> it was fun. I'm glad I'm alive for it. Catherine Loricella is not joking with that comment. The diehard 49ers fan literally did not know if her health would hold up this late into the season. She battled cancer this year, so we weren't sure if she was going to make it. Really? But she's here. And like so many others, ecstatic about the Niners coming back and winning. There wasn't really much said. Kyle said a couple things, Fred said a couple things, but we kept it simple. And so went out, we all knew what we had to do. Season's on the line, we're down 17. So um, I think everybody stepped up and when we played really good complimentary team football from there. But once BA made that play, it kind of unlocked it with such an explosive and, and kind of unlocked the whole team because right after getting that turnover that I believe Gip forced, um, that was huge. And right after that, you could feel the whole momentum with our players on our sideline in the stadium kind of flip. and. Um, you felt it was on after that. You know, you just had to come out with our hair on fire, honestly. It was it was just do or die at that point, so to speak. And uh, honestly, they've they, 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 they been running the ball really well. Shout out to their running backs. Uh, but when their number is called, I just tried to make a play, man. Got my hand on the ball, man. It was able to change the game, man. And it's all mindset, you know. It, you know, There's no special play that can be called in, in those situations. It's just it's a want to. And like, obviously, it meant, it meant more to us. We orchestrated a pretty good comeback because everybody was just focused on doing right longer. You know, that's something we say all the time is just do right longer. And um, I thought we showed that tonight. We had a good opening drive out of the second half. And that fourth down stop, you could just kind of feel an energy. We go down and score. All right, this is huge. Turnover. I was like, oh, man, all bets are off now. Like, bang, bang. We didn't want to go down as failures. And we know our defense is way too good to play like that. Obviously, just the feeling of, of you know, redemption coming back. Um, it's, it's huge, man, and, and for all of us, to what we went through, I guess, last year, this whole year has been crazy. You go through highs, you go through lows, and even in this game, the season's online, you're down 17, and then to, to see the, the clock hit zero and, and you're up, it's special to all of us, and so obviously we have one more, job's not finished, but um, I'm, I'm just, I can't tell you guys how proud I am of, of the team to fight. The calm before the storm at 49ers practice. Not rain, but the pressure and publicity hurricane that is the Super Bowl. When you go so early in your career, it's like, man, this is this is just what it's like. You, you go to the Super Bowl every year, you have a chance to compete, and uh, it's not that's not what the case is, you know. So uh, we we've been so close, and now we finally have another opportunity. And you got to make the most of it. It's deja vu all over again as the Niners will face off against the Kansas City Chiefs, the same team who bested them in Super Bowl 54. Nick Bosa was just a rookie in 2020, but he remembers the pain. How hard you have to play and how locked in you have to be for the entire four quarters if you want to, if you actually want to win. Um, and I've, I learned that, and I'm going to just relay to the guys that 
uh, there has to be a different, different level of effort, of intensity. That effort and intensity on display Thursday at their first full practice of the Super Bowl bye week. Work that's critical for the 49ers as they install their hopefully game-winning plan for the Chiefs. You try to get as much in this first week as possible. And when you get out there, we go through it again, but it is different. Our Monday's totally different with the media deal. Um, our routine's off because you got you got to do these press conferences every day. If you put stuff off to that week and think it's going to be a normal week, um, you're going to get to that Thursday or Friday and not quite feel as comfortable. This time next week, the team will be deep in the glitz and glamour of a Super Bowl in Las Vegas. They hope the taste of defeat last time and a focus on what they do best will fuel a victory to bring a sixth Lombardi Trophy home to the Bay Area. It will be the toughest game that we play all season. Like, no doubt about it. But we're going to be ready. We're going to make the most of this opportunity. And I believe in our guys, and I think you know, we can we can go take care of business. The team has knocked on the doorstep before, but a chance for history awaits them in Las Vegas. A patch of sunshine the moment the 49ers left Levi Stadium to embark on their journey to Las Vegas. We're looking forward to this game and hoping to win another game. We're going to win this other game. But make no mistake, the hundreds of fans who showed up had to tough out the rain. So I know it's going to be pouring down rain. Just warm up, put your stuff on, and come, you know, send our team off to Vegas. Bus by bus, the 49ers players and staff members left the team headquarters for the San Jose airport, where it was also a damp takeoff. Soon, they will try and bring a sixth Lombardi trophy to the Bay Area. For these fans, five isn't enough. I've been wearing it now since uh, 2012, but it's definitely well past its prime. We, we need to retire it, and we're going to get that number six here in Vegas. And I feel we're going to do it. We're a different team than the last time we played uh, Kansas City. Several blocks were lined up with ponchos, umbrellas, and a ton of red and gold. Beat the Chiefs! Beat the Chiefs! Chanting, screaming, showing the team why being faithful is so important. This here in the rain is going to be, I think, special for them. Like, it's pouring down rain, and they're still here supporting us because we're the faithful. They know we're behind them. They know that they can draw energy and vibes from us, and uh, they want to uh, produce that and get that sixth Super Bowl for, for uh, not themselves but for the faithful. They, the team really responds to the faithful. The faithful spent Sunday preaching to the team to win next week. Earlier this year, you know, there's not a lot of talk or buzz uh, really about, I guess, myself. And not that I listen to it and buy into all of it, but um, it's almost like, all right, I still have to go and, and, and play with that chip on my shoulder and prove to my teammates that, you know, I can be the guy for this team. I feel like I had some stuff to prove still. A cowboy hat and a loose fitting tie. It was a party that day in Miss Canberra's English class after they finished reading The Great Gatsby. Brock Purdy's smile says it all. That is 100% authentically who he has been since he was young. Um, there are no errors about him. That is just who he is. Authentic, never afraid to just be who he is and live in the moment. That is how his teachers at Perry High School remember him. We had to do a debate between Karl Marx and Adam Smith. And one of the things I was like, well, if you're going to come up here, you have to have an accent. You have to either have a Scottish or a German accent. And he just killed it. Like he, he put himself out there and that was like on the second week of school. Being who he is is not just how he acted in the classroom, but also on the football field. He was just an everyday guy on campus. You wouldn't know he's a superstar athlete. His high school coach, Preston Jones, says any play he would draw on a whiteboard, Brock would be able to execute. He's a uh, servant leader. I mean, he's there for his teammates. He's there for his family. He's there for his friends. And uh, that's, that's who he is. And uh, it's hard not to get behind a guy that's like that. Being a leader is the reason Brock went on to lead Perry High School to runners-up in the state championship while also winning Arizona High School Player of the Year in 2017. But it wasn't just his footballing skills. His teachers say his humility and focus is why they knew he would be destined for success. Sometimes kids will complain like, oh, I got to wash the dishes. Whatever had to get done, he would just do it. No complaining, you know, just whatever helped the class, whatever helped his team, like he did it. In his second year in the league, Brock has a chance to help the 49ers win their first Super Bowl in 29 years. To celebrate the game, it's Brock Purdy's Spirit Week at school. This is um, an entire week dedicated to supporting one of our own. Hoping this once smiling kid in class can become a Super Bowl champion. Opening night at the Super Bowl, 
49ers fans, they turned out in droves. In fact, there was a total of 23,000 people or so at the Allegiant Stadium to watch opening night. Now, also controversy on day one. The 49ers not happy with the playing field at UNLV. They feel it's too spongy, and they've had issues with fields in the, in the past and, and players getting hurt. So tonight, I asked Debo Samuel about that field. What is your assessment of the field? I don't know. You got to ask Kyle. He said, uh, go talk to Kyle. Uh, so I forgot now I'm talking to you. I'm so glad he sent you to me because I thought about this a while. And you just got to go talk to Debo. Oh, no. <laughs> serious? Yeah, it is what it is. We'll be all right. Debo, 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 Debo. Something that you've dreamed about since you know I was seven years old. It still feels like a dream. This is the biggest Thing, like biggest sports thing in the world. After this Super Bowl, after we get the win, I, I'm gonna go into my barber and I'm gonna say I'm gonna get the Travis Kelsey and see what happens. <laughs> if I had a wrestling name, the Bear. I don't know. Maybe uh, the Big Yeti. I don't know. The Big Yeti. You don't want to see the Yeti. I like soft tacos, but I'll do hard tacos. 49ers fans, Blue Man Group, and Sourdough Sam. Super Bowl must be here. I mean, honestly, I just think it's going to be a great, eventful game. I mean, I've, I've been here interviewing both sides of Chiefs and the 49ers. 11-year-old Jeremiah might just be one of the smartest people at this opening night of Super Bowl week. He's already interviewing the big stars. He surely knows Nick Bosa, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Trent Williams, but he might not know what Kyle Juszczyk used to eat before a game. Back in the day, I used to do some weird things, steak, spaghetti, sweet potatoes, eggs, this kind of thing. Now, honestly, um, depends on what time the game is, but I keep it pretty pretty standard. Or that many of the players like to play a lot of video games. Yeah, I like Madden. I play Madden. If I got some downtime, I'll play a few games. But if pushed to really evaluate this game, he knows what's up. They're both hungry, they're both really great rosters, and they're both healthy, which is the most important part of football. So I really just think it's going to be a really great game. Sadly, even now, during Super Bowl week, Dallas Cowboys fan Super Cowboy won't admit who's the real team. Keep down going for the Niners? Absolutely not. <laughs> but that's okay. As long as smart minds like Jeremiah prevail, Little Man will pick a winner if pushed to do so. I mean, if I had to choose, if they could be choose, I'd have to pick the Niners because I'm a Raider, and if I, I'd be violating Raider Nation law if I use for the Chiefs under any circumstances. But that's only if I had to pick. I don't think last Super Bowl has anything to do with this game. Um, just like last week doesn't have anything to do with this game. Um, what's good about guys who have been here before, especially the younger guys who came here, uh, you know, they can talk to the younger guys who are coming now and kind of tell them how they felt at that time and then how you feel after. I mean, it's a cool week. You get caught up in a lot of stuff, but I mean, you don't remember all this stuff. Uh, you remember the game. Um, and people for the rest of their lives should remember that game if you won that game. Weightlifting throwing, running, and even jumping. No jump needed. All available to fans at the Super Bowl experience. Well, not yet, but starting Wednesday, even the organizers have their favorites. I am a speed demon, yes. <laughs> While setup may still be happening, we were able to pull some strings so we could kick some field goals. That said, no one wants to kick by themselves, so we went up against the real competition. Kansas City. Myself, representing ABC 7 News in the San Francisco Bay Area against Cody Holyoke of the ABC affiliate in Kansas City. Cody seemed to think I was working him when I kicked one through the uprights during our practice round. Oh, great. I'm getting... You just... You just hustled me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sadly, that kick may have been as good as it got for the both of us. I saw Jake Moody last night, but I didn't really talk with him about this. Cody struggled a bit. Nope. I scraped it. Uh, I'm still not doing it. I thought it was good. It was a hard kick, you know? That's right. No, I, it's a hard kick. I've done much more soccer than football. But yeah. let's be honest. Okay, I didn't do much better. Second time's a charm. Oh. Dang. Oh, I'm wide left. Shorter than wide left. Oh, I just don't want to pull anything, you know, in old age. Oh. 
He got the distance. Even falling straight on my rear at one point. But I do blame that on the turf. Definite turf issues. It wasn't really oh, much of a show. No, no, clearly you win this. I'm just glad that our team is on the field with really good athletes and, and all that. I don't have to deal with them. Uh, Kansas City is in a, a wonderful place right now for yeah. the Super Bowl in five years. I thought it was all about Taylor Swift, though. Yeah, well, they say it's the villain era. Yeah. Hoping for a Debo show, mm -hmm. hoping for a McCaffrey show. Yeah, I'm not hoping for any of that. I like party. the idea, though, of leaving it up to the pros to do this kind of yes, stuff. Yes, yes. Clearly, we are in no shape to be on a professional no shape. football team. That's okay. You know, we're not injured, though. So that's yes, yes. Good, good game, good game. Good game. In the shadows of some of Las Vegas' newest hotels is the Golden Steer Steakhouse. Not only the oldest steakhouse on the Strip, but one with a city by the bay kind of feel to it. If you walk into the Golden Steer, you're going to feel like you're touching and feeling that atmosphere that was San Francisco back in the 60s and the 70s. The leather, the lights, the feel. Amanda Signorelli and her husband run the Golden Steer, which has been in her family for many years. It actually used to be on San Francisco Street, and this was in San Francisco Plaza, now called Frisco Plaza. The Rat Pack were regulars, along with Elvis, who was said to be seen eating burgers at the bar when he first started coming. But the San Francisco feel is what likely attracted baseball great and San Francisco native Joe DiMaggio here many, many years ago. Joe DiMaggio, Marilyn Monroe. Here at the Golden Steer, we actually have two Joe DiMaggio booths. We, as we like to say, we have one Joe DiMaggio booth for when him and Marilyn were happy and one when they were not so much. It appears that the who's who of the NFL know all about the Golden Steer. Signorelli says the restaurant has been overbooked for this Super Bowl week for nearly three months. We're actually opening 30 minutes early to try and accommodate walk-ins. And Tuesday night, every seat was full here at the Golden Steer. As to Joe DiMaggio, there aren't any specific stories as to what he would eat, but when Marilyn Monroe came, she had a specific diet, a ribeye steak and carrots. It's an experience like no other, a bar where nearly everything is made of ice. Before we go in, it really is cold, it's not for show, so I gotta put this on. They have all of these options back there. They have black, they have white, but of course I have to go with the extra long. With the look decided, it's now time to make an entrance. Welcome to Minus Five, have fun. Thank you, okay, we're going in. Again, it is really cold in here, as Blake Nightingale, General Manager of Minus Five, Ars Spark, will explain. None of this is for show. This is not like fog machines in here. This is not plastic. No. This is really cold in here. Describe what we're feeling. So this is about 15 degrees right now we're in. We keep it nice and cold. Obviously, the whole place is made of ice except the floor and ceiling. And right now, we're getting ready for the big game with some final touch-ups. Those final touches include these incredible ice sculptures made by Austin Greenleaf. And all we're trying to do is get that kind of rounded, nice plush edge. Austin was brave enough to teach me to use the heavy machinery to help him sculpt that football. And just softly go up with yep. it? Okay, I don't want to ruin his work, but I'm afraid I'm going you to. You absolutely Let's see. will not. There we go. Oh my gosh, it feels so smooth. This is like such a dangerous tool, but it feels so cool, and it's actually very therapeutic, and I could do this all day. But my beautiful sculpting work isn't the only big day specialty served up at Minus Five. So just like in the big game, you make the prop bet where you get to, to decide the mystery Gatorade color that's going to be poured on the winning coach. I pour an ounce and a half of vodka, and then I top it off with some lemon lime soda, and then I pour in the color, and if you guess the color correctly, you win one of our prizes. And by the way, folks, the cup, also made out of ice. Cheers! After the ice comes fire at the cozy 1923 speakeasy just next door to Minus Five. Now, how do we get in? Oh, wait. Shh. Secret. Inside, you'll find music and a selection of bourbon and much more to warm you up after your cool Super Bowl experience at Minus Five. All right, Blake, thank you so much for the amazing tour. Any last words for the Bay Area viewers? Uh, make sure you come here, check out the game with us, and go Niners. Woo! That game will always stay with me because of how it ended. Um, you know, I think regardless of the opponent, we were so excited this season, knowing who we had on this team, uh, the amount of talent, and obviously the opportunity last year that we kind of had stripped from us to come back and, and have an opportunity to, to make it back to this game. And so regardless of the opponent, I knew this is something that we set out uh, and was our, our plan all along to be back in the Super Bowl and win it. Just the overall sense of urgency to win a Super Bowl is pretty high. And yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's at an all-time high. I'm pretty sure it was a pretty high in 2019 as well, like it is every year. 
but um, no, I mean, like, this has been something we've been trying to get to. We've been to two NFC championships before this and lost, and it's like, okay, well, what do you have to do to get over the hump? What do you have to do to get over the hump? Well, we finally won that game, then it's like, okay, well, what are you going to do to win this game, right? So those are questions that, you know, I'm not going to say that we've sat in meetings and talked about that, but we're very confident in our team. We're confident in our abilities, and, you know, we have a very talented football team that you've seen all year. Uh, we've been able to bounce back from, you know, down some points, so I'm very just confident in this team. So Niners fans are arriving from... I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, I'm going for the 49ers. What in the? Been a 49er fan since 1980, and I uh, hope we get number six. Danelle Woods and his wife Michelle say they are part of Kansas City faithful. They will not be going for the Chiefs. It will be all San Francisco. They just were like, "What about Patrick Mahomes?" But we have a group of San Francisco people there, so it's fun. Do they call you names in Kansas City because you love the great team? Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and they beat us the last time, so. We got to get some payback. Round two, baby. Wednesday, Fremont Street, or Old Vegas, had the typical interesting performers. But just look up and you see this. Incredible images of the San Francisco 49ers and Kansas City Chiefs on the Viva Vision canopy, which is the world's largest high-definition video screen. The Texas 49ers fans were all about it. They have 49er fans in Texas? Oh, yeah, plenty, man. Especially because, <laughs> you know, since COVID, all of California is moving to Texas. Well, not everybody, but we understand the faithful are everywhere. Vegas, though, it's not just 49ers and Chiefs fans. Take it away, Alexis Beatum. Who's going to win? Taylor Swift. <laughs> because she brings everybody to football. Now all women love football because of Taylor Swift. Only Taylor Swift all the way. Taylor Swift's better than everything. Yes, the Swifties are in the house as well. I know, I know. Back to football and one last hard-hitting question to the Garcia family, sipping on their Vegas drinks and dreaming about a 49ers Super Bowl win. Is there a point, like, if you have enough gear that you'll give in and get tickets? <laughs> I don't think I would do that. No, I don't think so. We're living on a retirement plan now. <laughs>